welcome you here to our talk with Olga. Today is uh, cleansing. We continue with cleansing of the intestines and uh, with we try to make a step to uh, breathing because breath has also a role in this uh, process, major role. The previous open talk, which was about the cleansing, we started the topic on cleansing, and uh, it was we put most attention at the liver, and today we will continue with uh, intestines, and we have lots of questions this time. Hello, everybody. Uh, since this is not our first open talk, uh, she would like to know which uh, open talks you have been watching before. Uh, because she opened a lot of topics. The first question is, uh, question is concerning uh, two methods of cleansing of the liver. And uh, first, uh, the way of cleansing the liver with the juice, uh, with the apple juice. The first point is uh, that the juice from the apple is quite sweet, there's a lot of sugar. And the body will perceive it like um, nourishment, but we need to prepare uh, the liver for for throwing out yeah. and bitterness uh, in opposite uh, to sugar bitterness um, stimulates and when in the 90s this clean this cleansing appeared it was in the first place uh, connected with uh, apple juice yes but then after a few years people um, yeah uh, came to the conclusion that it is uh, better to use grapefruit. But there may be there are maybe reasons because of which a person cannot use uh, grapefruit fruit juice, no. maybe allergies. No. But Olga personally still doesn't recommend uh, juice from apples. Uh, something else can be chosen. Apple vinegar is simply uh, horrifying. Olga says. If we are talking about the recovery of kidneys, then first thing that we need to t say is that the liver cleansing is like a surgery operation. Uh, but the official medicine, as for today, uh, uses uh, mm, for many years uh, Dubash. Uh, Dubash is a, a way of stimulating your liver with uh, warm with warming by warming the uh, liver and at the same time drinking a lot of mineral water. Concerning the bitter salt, uh, you can invent a lot. And uh, concerning the apple juice, uh, only the apple juice, uh, Olga doesn't recommend uh, apple juice, uh, only juice, without anything else um, to drink at all, not only for the cleansing, but uh, in any way. Uh, it should be mixed with something. It is a uh, way too big um, pressure for the uh, pancreas. Uh, and in this moment we need rather strength in our organism, in our body. Uh, everybody has a um, preferred way of doing it. So if this one works with your body best, then this is it. But uh, there are certain uh, moments. And Olga, for example, last time on our uh, um, open talk about the liver, Olga uh, said that she herself uh, prefers prefers a refined oil. Personally, for herself, she she uh, sees more uh, reason in doing this. Uh, somebody else uh, thinks that uh, it is better to do it with. Uh, um, olive oil. Uh, the point here is that Olga wants to make clear uh, these talks they are directed uh, at the fact that Olga has a certain experience and she cannot only share this experience. Uh, thanks to this she can also show a certain alternative uh, way of doing but very often she encounters uh, very serious problems. And then she can um, preserve the health of people somehow. Uh, but if a person is sure in his actions, uh, Olga won't force you for another, into another direction. And now about the kidneys. And uh, the question here is uh, how to help them recover after liver cleansing. But in general about the kidneys. Uh, Olga uh, sees no uh, connection between the liver and the kidneys if they are healthy. 
So if we are talking about a separated uh, program of recovery of the kidneys, uh, then Olga would uh, stick to this. Uh, because, uh, to put it simply, uh, liver cleansing is um, mainly directed at uh, taking effect on the liver. And it is a big work for the gallbladder. And uh, about the time, why did Olga um, recommend it to drink in the evening from 9 to 10 p.m. because from 11 uh, p.m. till uh, 1 o'clock in the night uh, due to biorhythmical work of our body uh, liver is active. At this time the liver is um, very active and another big advantage uh, is that after such a cleansing with oil and lemon a uh, person may fall asleep directly and uh, then simply continue warming it up. Uh, this means that the cleansing itself will be uh, easier to, um, to come over. But in any way, these processes uh, may differ with every person. Yes, about the bitter uh, soul. Uh, bitter soul was uh, an invention by Moritz because the salt is working like a laxative uh, in the body. And this way uh, all the bilirubin doesn't um, stay in the body too long. And the cleansing is completed um, faster. Uh, but for example, Olga's last experience with the cleansing was interesting because Olga drank the oil at 10 p.m. and at 11 she went to bed and she woke up uh, around 1 o'clock in the night and the stones started to exit uh, already and they actually exited uh, during the next uh, 48 hours and this was uh, connected with the fact that uh, Olga in, uh, did indeed uh, cleansed her intestines before doing the uh, liver cleansing uh, yes, you can damage your microflora with uh, enema. For example, uh, when it is done in a therapy um, where a lot of water is um, infused, uh, usually uh, after, the colon, after such a colon therapy, they use uh, or in, infuse some kind of decoction or instead of decoction, some kind of solution. Uh, in order to support the microflora. So if we are doing the cleansing, we need to under, uh, if we are, we are doing enema, we have to understand uh, what for we are doing it. And uh, Olga will tell later about the cleansing of the intestines, but after we uh, have done it, it will not be necessary to do uh, a lot of uh, enemas anymore. After this, you simply have to stick to a normal diet and then the intestines won't get uh, filled with uh, unnecessary stuff. But aside from the microflora, there is another uh, danger uh, that the intestine unlearns how to exit the food. So this is how our body is built. Uh, this is a fundamental mechanism. Uh, if, we, uh, if we take over the work of some organ in our body, then the organ simply stops to do it on its, uh, itself. Uh, and there are many ways of how we can cleanse our intestines. And in most of the cases, uh, we simply infuse uh, like one or one and a half liter. And by doing so, they stretch the intestines. And this is also not very good. Uh, the last seminar Olga gave in Germany, uh, personally, there was a woman and she is um, working with the method for transitioning to breatharianism right now and she has this problem with candida. So this is an excellent question and to answer the question uh, about uh, um, oxygen, yes, correctly, not enough oxygen means candida grows rapidly, of course. But we need to understand that this is not the cause, it is some, simply um, a result from something, a symptom. And the cause is not only the disturbance of, uh, breath, of breathing, of the breath rhythm, but also in the uh, fall of the immune uh, immunity system. And in the first place, this is also a polluted intestine. And an interesting theory is going uh, on right now, going around right now. And she is not so old. Uh, somebody said that the appendix 
is uh, the place where uh, the correct microflora is stored, so to say a copy of the correct microflora. Maybe it is like this, but we have to understand uh, in general where does the microflora in our body come from. Uh, in the embryo, embryo the flora uh, starts to be populated um, after the fourth month. And uh, this is the flora of our mother. And in general, most of our mothers uh, have been eating uh, like uh, normal, not uh, being on raw food or not liquidarian or something like this. So given this fact, it means that even before we were born, we had no chance of gaining a correct uh, microflora. Another question is that since we are born with it, we adapt in some way to this. But in this case, let, let, let's uh, think about breatharianism, where Olga is speaking of a completely different kind of microflora. And we need to grow it, this new flora, and to step into a symbiotic relationship to learn to interact with it. But this goes very deep and also in a little bit another direction than the question was. Back to the question, since we have uh, a problem with candida, the first thing that we need to do is to cleanse our um, colon intestines. Uh, secondly, if we are talking about the um, uh, candida within a woman, then this, wom this woman has also to cleanse her vagina. Then she has to balance, or the, the one has to balance a new diet which is not supporting uh, candida anymore. Uh, restore immunity system and actually uh, learn how to breathe correctly. And by the way, uh, after you have done a diet, uh, you have a candida and then you make a certain diet and then you have a lot of desire for fresh pressed juices, this means that you have done uh, something correctly. So this is a good sign. And many people do one certain mistake uh, when they start to drink uh, sweet juice. And this is not always good because Candida loves sweets and uh, this way you are supporting it again on the other side. So from this point of view, uh, juice from vegetables is like a barrier for Candida because this is not the best nourishment for them and this way you are fighting it, so to say. So it is believed that uh, the most part of photons is present in leaves, in uh, plants which grow on the earth, on the surface. And less photons are in the roots, uh, in the roots, in roots vegetables, for example. Uh, that's why when we are doing uh, juice from vegetables, Olga recommends to add the leaves from this certain age vegetables as well. And since coconut uh, is and like the musk, musk muscat nut, uh, they are nuts, so they actually don't have so many uh, photons. Okay, the question is about if we need to use uh, bandhas in yoga. A bandha in yoga is a lock, so to say. Uh, it's like a tension, but this is uh, done in yoga and exercise so that no energy gets lost. And this, this topic about uh, yoga goes rather to breathing actually and when we will have it next time uh, we will uh, put a lot of attention at this moment. And the topic today is a little bit uh, from another point of view. Uh, but Olga is basically she is against it and she will uh, explain it very detail, in very, very detail uh, what's going on there. This is a technique that is used uh, in order for cleansing uh, of the intestines and uh, Olga says yes and concerning the question uh, which ones. Uh, the point here is that uh, concerning Shank Prakshalana Olga has uh, an on access, on uh, method of doing it. And uh, her method goes uh, further than the classic uh, Shank Prakshalana. After four years uh, of practicing and gathering experience from her students as well, she see, uh, sees definitely a big advantage uh, in this method and in the development that she has done with it. The only answer that uh, Olga wants to give now concerning which juices you should drink after Shank Prakshalana 
uh, vegetable juices and those should those juices shouldn't be um, having any negative effect on the uh, working of your intestines so they shouldn't be uh, aggressive in any way no negative uh, undesirable effects mm -hmm. as long as it is helping and the person uh, resonates with it uh, there is nothing uh, she, uh, negative about it uh, she doesn't think that this is uh, the best choice but in the beginning in the first stage on the first steps it can indeed be helpful but in, in the initial stage when the person is still regulating the state it is okay but if the process goes on uh, it is uh, better to um, don't, not to use it anymore Olga, Olga finds this question very um, interesting so if we are talking about the process in the first place we have to understand uh, what we um, what we what we mean by by saying this if uh, if we mean uh, fasting uh, like it is uh, very um, widely spread right now in all, in many teachings for example uh, after the process by just muhin where you fast for seven days then Olga finds this uh, approach very extreme and she isn't supporting it. So indeed you need not only be to be prepared but you also need to understand when you are ready to do this because it's a lot of um, tension to... Um, it's, it can be very hard to do uh, dry fast for seven days or even longer. And why was this question uh, interesting for Olga? Because she finds that cleansing, detoxification is a natural process. And how can, you, uh, underst how can you make sure that you are ready or not? Probably by the same way uh, when you understand uh, if you need to wash your clothes now or not. We need to cleanse ourselves uh, basically uh, from actually from our childhood because uh, our embryo is built out of the toxins from the mother. We simply don't have any other material. In the pre previous open thought, Olga uh, stated and gave the example about that she met one clean child actually, and his liver cleansed uh, uh, automatically by itself uh, every month once. But he was born from a raw food area. Not everybody is in this situation. And Olga knows that uh, many children have uh, polluted liver with four or five years already. And she understands that for many it may sound very surprising. But Olga have, uh, has enough uh, concrete cases, concrete examples. And, uh, children uh, got their liver cleansed in a very soft way, but still uh, biliary bean was exiting. So this means the earlier we start to cleanse, the better. This is a typical question. First of all, there is no, uh, there is no uh, united single meaning of uh, the term breatharianism. And if you uh, hear and look at uh, different teachers, different breatharian teachers, you will find uh, their, me, their uh, point of view somewhere in, even in opposition to each other. And depending on the social work which this breatharian teacher is doing, his opinion will change. Example, Jasmuhin was talking about uh, uh, nourishment by prana and gave a technique for breathing with love. And there are people who are copying her seminars. And since they copy her seminars, of course it is, um, it is useful for them to copy uh, the statement that the body is nourished by prana. If people are giving other seminars, they will state their idea. For example, uh, Olga, in her, Olga's opinion is that there is no such a process where we are indeed nourished by prana. Absolutely everything is prana. What we call ourselves, uh, what we call our body is prana as well. If we um, remember how Taoists uh, perceive reality or understand reality, uh, then they would say that the whole world is, uh, is uh, 
uh, happening of different uh, kinds of qi is the appearance of different uh, qi and their interconnection, interaction. If, if we take other Eastern uh, traditions like Buddhism, then there it is told that everything is present but there is only one energy. For all Gabritarianism, it's not nourish, nourishment uh, by prana, from prana. It is a very deep interaction with oneself and uh, self inter and a very deep self-regulation. And actually, Olga states uh, that um, to the bigger part, Gabritarianism is uh, meat-eating, consuming of meat. This means that when our symbiotic flora is wor working, then our, our body receives every amino acid that it needs uh, and also any proteins that it needs. And if the actions are correctly and constructive, it doesn't take much effort. But next, the person encounters emotional problems, energetical problems and psychological problems. That's why her system uh, has these three uh, basic directions. The first is the balancing of, of the physical body. Uh, second is the stabilizing of the energetical. And third is the uh, uh, emotional, psychological balance. And uh, the interaction of these three spheres is what we call spirituality. So from this position, from this point of view, Ritharian Breatharianism uh, can indeed be um, defined as a spiritual work. But to say that uh, Breatharianism is based on the fact that we are nourished by prana, this is simply speculation. And Olga repeatedly says that in order to prove this, she adapted a puppy, a dog, and Olga has uh, the example when uh, young uh, children of three, four or five years and uh, they transit uh, way faster than their parents if they are doing this approach. Mm. So these have no uh, idea about uh, any, any special kind of breathing, any meditation or anything uh, other spiritual um, yeah, speculation. But if we are talking here about experience from Olga, about the duration, uh, the, sh the fastest transition that Olga experienced after her webinar was within three days. But at the same time, this can take years. We have to understand in what uh, condition our body is when we start, in what condition our psyche is. But if we take the um, understanding, European understanding of the process of today, when people are drinking juices and call themselves Pretharianism, or they eat a few times in a week and call themselves breatharian, then uh, this uh, kind of breatharians, Olga has a few thousands of them, of them in her society. And at the same time she has people who made the transition uh, to a dry regime and had the experience of uh, more than half a year without anything. So the webinar itself is a method. And Olga isn't giving her webinars, seminars, lectures in some uh, metaphysical uh, context. So she gives concrete recipes, concrete actions and concrete systems where each step of the system has its own reason. And on each step Olga precisely describes every effect, the reason for them to take place, if those effects are positive, how to uh, cultivate them further, and if they are negative, uh, how to get rid of them, how to clean them out. So to answer these questions, uh, we don't have the time uh, of a webinar here, so uh, that's, uh, that's what the webinar is for. So first of all, we shouldn't uh, idealize um, we shouldn't put uh, Breatharianism into an ideological uh, point of view. And actually, maybe we shouldn't idealize anything at all. And this is the biggest mistake uh, done by people who are uh, walking on the spiritual path. Uh, Olga needed uh, quite a few years in order to go away from, ideal, uh, from ideology, from idealization. Uh, indeed, Breatharianism gives a lot of uh, miracles 
and beautiful uh, effects and moments. And in some cases, it gives uh, it gives a recovery in, in physiological and psychological uh, issues as well. But in some cases, it doesn't happen. Here are two examples. Uh, actually, there are a lot of examples, but we don't have the time for this. Uh, first example: Olga got to meet, uh, got to know a woman. She was drinking only water for two years already, and she wasn't, uh, and she hasn't done the transition by the by Olga's approach. And she had sarcoma when she done uh, she, when she was transitioning. And uh, the fact that she transited uh, rescued her life, saved her life. So she didn't die. But after two years, sarcoma didn't go away. So it stopped developing, uh, but it still stayed there. And the other example, uh, a woman again of uh, 65 years, uh, she transited to breatharianism. And also not by Olga's uh, method, uh, they got to know, they got each other to know a little bit later. And half a year she had beautiful processes and a great regeneration happened. A huge amount of energy, strength and a lot of other positive effects appeared. Uh, but uh, after half a year, oedema uh, on her feet appeared. So uh, water gathered in the feet and then the oedema started to go higher and higher uh, up to the knees and this is a sign for uh, dysfunction of the heart and this symptom is well known to the medicine. The, uh, the doctors know that if this, this oedema uh, goes up to the hip then the heart will stop beating. And since she was doing this breatharian uh, transition under the surveillance of a doctor, uh, doctor recommended her, the doctor recommended her to exit the process since it became dangerous to her health. Uh, but from Olga's personal position she thinks that being in the diet of 400 calories a day uh, is a, a very healthy and the optimal um, way. Uh, basically this is something like four glasses of juice every day. But this is something that you really need to be prepared uh, to do it. So prepare your psyche, your body, your energy. You simply cannot start doing it uh, from one day to the next. Basically that's what Olga is teaching, how to um, gain this uh, way of life without danger. And then you can choose, uh, do you like to stay in this mode or would you like to make a step in another direction, go further or somewhere else. Stay only on water or even go dry. And I asked Olga to stay here a psychological uh, moment, so where uh, breatharianism didn't heal uh, and psychological issue. Uh, when people go to breatharianism they become very sensitive and start to feel uh, a lot of new vibes and clairvoyance for example can open up and this way a uh, person perceives a huge amount of information uh, and he is not ready to perceive it. And in this, uh, from this position it would be uh, wise to return back, make a few steps back in order to balance yourself and then you may go uh, further again. And uh, in the opposite way something that uh, benefited uh, psychological issues. No. Uh, Olga had never a uh, warm uh, relationship in her family. So it happened that, that Olga's mother was taken from the shelter when she already was a teenager. And so to say, uh, Olga's mother is a child of war, mm. of the Second World War. So that's why in her family there were no uh, relative uh, feeling. So the people who adopted uh, Olga's mother couldn't give her these uh, feelings. So she had no example uh, from uh, whom she could learn this um, behavior. Uh, Olga never experienced a uh, true familiar relationship. And when Olga transited to breatharianism, she was uh, older than 40 years. And after Olga's transition, something happened in the uh, family, in the situation concerning the family, 
uh, something uh, that united all of them. And right now they have a very warm and close relationship. Maybe something happened within Olga, but Olga didn't do anything uh, in order to uh, create certain situations, to solve them. Uh, they simply happened to, uh, like this. And the topic of today is uh, cleansing of the intestine. And Olga will talk now, tell now a little bit about the physiology of the intestine. Uh, judging from her experience and work with a lot of people, she can uh, give a kind of a guarantee that with the most of people, the intestines are not in the right order, not, are not in the right place. And in the first place, if we are talking about deep changes in the, in, the, in the physiology of our body, we need to put the intestines back uh, to the place where it belongs. Uh, but uh, let's uh, pay attention to the question, uh, why is it not where it belongs? Originally, it was thought by the nature, so to say, that a being, a human being, would be nourished or will eat a lot of different products and mainly raw fru raw products and initially our body wasn't built for cooked food so uh, our natural product uh, should be uh, fruits and a lot of uh, herbs of green so we need a certain kind of microflora and when we start to eat cooked food and this actually happens uh, after uh, the first months of our uh, existence here on earth pass by and then our microflora gets disturbed and gases develops in our intestines and medicine says that when a newborn uh, develops gases uh, it's normal and they say okay that's normal uh, this means the digestion starts and the, the digestion comes to work and comes in balance and many generations uh, grow up with this idea and many people don't have the idea that uh, it can be different Olga have uh, the people in mind who whose parents are of Darian and her experience and the experience of uh, giving birth to children and these children do not have any problems with gases so uh, our intestines start to stretch and we eat uh, cooked food and we eat uh, food that has not enough cellulose mm. the inner so surface of the intestines is creating slime non-stop in order for the food to be easier exited, to be easier guided through the uh, intestines. And people uh, who are doing Shankrakshalana, uh, they know that we have the four main sphincters in our intestines. But actually we have uh, like 35 sphincters in our intestines. And uh, when uh, food enters our uh, digestional tract, our intestines, uh, the intestines makes the uh, pulsating uh, movement of compressions and relaxations in order to uh, push the product further. This we call peristalsis. So imagine we eat something soft, but it doesn't have any cellulose. So for example, we have dinner, we eat coffee, some bread and cheese. And when this uh, food package uh, goes through the intestines, um, pieces from this food remain in the slime. Leftover of the food remain in the slime. So we need to understand that in the stomach uh, the, f the package of food gets only acidified. Uh, it isn't absorbed in the stomach. Uh, then it enters the small intestine and there it, got, it gets uh, alkalized. Uh, f uh, as uh, food continues through the intestines, it will be um, it will be uh, affected by the microflora, and next it will be in the colon, uh, where it is exiting the body, and in the colon, these leftovers from food they stick to the slime, and also in the uh, large intestine, in the colon or large intestine. Uh, there the main uh, absorption of the products happens. 
for example, you, you eat a salad. Uh, all the um, liquid, all the water from the salad uh, is being absorbed into the slime in, in the large intestine. And cellulose uh, scratches off, so to say, uh, the slime which is not necessary, which is old. And after this, uh, the body uh, creates new clean uh, slime. But when you eat uh, bread with cheese, uh, the first point is that there is no liquid, there is no water, and there is not much that can be absorbed. Secondly, there is no cellulose, and it is quite uh, hard for the body to push uh, this package through the intestines. Meanwhile, it creates gases, so uh, the process of fermentation takes place. Uh, methane uh, is being created and the intestines uh, become uh, blown, stretched and uh, as an example if we stretch clothes they lose their form the same way a stretched uh, intestine also cannot keep the form uh, the peristalsis gets disturbed and since the intestines are quite elastic they uh, will be back to normal uh, quite soon, quite fast. But the point here is that uh, people eat three or four times a day and the intestines are busy all the time, so it, it, it is never empty. It has no time to exit the food, so it has uh, logically out no time to shrink in the um, volume. And this leads to the next serious issue. Olga was talking about the leftovers which uh, are absorbed or um, st which stick to the slime. And uh, because of the strong absorption, these leftovers become very uh, hard, small uh, stones, so to say. And then the next uh, additional slime layer is cr created. And the dirty uh, layer of slime, which already has a certain uh, densiness uh, isn't uh, scratched off and this way uh, kind of a skin is created and then the next uh, package of food uh, comes yeah. and the process repeats itself and this uh, goes on and on and these small pieces leftovers uh, they become uh, really big stones and these stones uh, are indeed uh, in the true meaning of this word Olga doesn't say that every person has stones in the intestines but this process uh, happens uh, very often additionally what starts to happen this uh, thick uh, la layer of slime or this dense la layer of slime it becomes thicker and thicker and becomes bigger and this way uh, it's like a very dense layer of uh, carton is uh, created of uh, cardboard is created and uh, the intestines uh, are blown up more and more are stretched more and more and uh, as it stretches it starts to um, affect the surrounding organs and they uh, moved away from the place where they are originally uh, belong. So this way it loses its own uh, original position and the whole balance is disturbed. The flow of blood is disturbed. The breath breathing rhythm is disturbed. Of course, uh, also all the other excretory functions are disturbed. And next we have an interesting image. Uh, thinking uh, about a man, for example, who decides to uh, transit to a certain diet and doing so he is not cleansing his intestines and he says I'm eating clean food I'm buying it in the, in the eco store and let's say he is uh, actually drinking uh, fresh pressed juices for from example from tomatoes but when this uh, tomato juice uh, enters the intestine and the absorption begins then all these elements from the tomato have to go through this thick layer of actually and basically uh, crap and by eating a clean product so to say crap enters our uh, blood and then the man is wondering uh, I made the transition to raw food why am I do feeling so bad and this is such a widespread problem practically every 
everyone who transits to uh, goes over to raw food uh, encounters this situation and then you all go to the internet and you open a forum uh, on the topic of raw food dairyism and you encounter all these common uh, mistakes, all these common uh, dis disbalances and at the same time uh, people still uh, think uh, I'm eating raw food, uh, so my body has to clean itself completely by its own, so it has to be clean now. But it's not a fact that until the body cleans itself completely, that this person will feel good, will be able to continue his life and uh, to not do any more harm than there is already existing. And there is one more very important process that is playing a major role. Cooked food, cooked water has a lot of non-organical calcium and since the intestines have a lot of uh, uh, turns, uh, this turn, these turns uh, become uh, crocked, uh, become um, overlaid by the uh, calcium and become stiff. Uh, this is just the same uh, scum. So our intestines become very uh, solid, become very stiff. So uh, about what peristalsis and what cleansings can we speak here actually? And in thousands of cases Olga have seen, has seen this process happening. When Olga was cleansing her intestines for the first time, it was not the first time, but uh, at some point a big and white substance fell out of her and it looked just like the intestines and Olga became very afraid because she thought uh, something happened with her, her intestines and now she will die she thought that now she will start bleeding so uh, what processes are happening next the body receives a lot of toxic elements and cannot cleanse itself in time logically this sphere is very welcome for a bad flora, for pat pathogenic flora and this thick layer of slime becomes the place where parasites like to, um, to, pop, to, be, to populate and where they like to uh, grow and uh, leave eggs. Here's an example. Olga has done uh, cleansing of the intestines and after this a few years passed by back at that time she was on raw food and with her in her home there were two cats and one dog and uh, the doctors said to Olga that she has parasites a hundred percently because of the animals and uh, she made a big test for parasites and no parasites were found so she has done one correct uh, cleansing of the intestine and cleansed it completely so back to the story when uh, something that, that seemed to be the colon exited uh, Olga it was like a bag out of a compressed slime. When this exited Olga, she understood what is a healthy uh, intestine. Uh, next, there are many uh, possible methods of cleansing the intestines. And some of these uh, methods are quite raw and they can uh, inflict a lot of damage. Uh, for example, many people use acids in order to cleanse their uh, colon. So for example apple vinegar or lemon because in the first place this is affecting the flora and it is killing her uh, and this also affects the humidity of the slime so how much water there is and what is also important is that many people are doing uh, normal animals so to say so they take uh, a bag for about one and a half to two liters and by inf in infusing this amount into the uh, colon into the intestines it becomes stretched and this way the crab also dissolves in the uh, liquid and this uh, toxic liquids again start to be absorbed uh, through the intestines into the blood so instead of cleansing the intestines, the person uh, toxifies himself and stretches his, his intestines. Olga recommends to do it in another way. Uh, this way is quite easy to do. If you have a bath 
uh, a bath tub, so to say a bath. Uh, you sit on it, so one with, with one foot inside the bath and the other foot is on the floor. And so it uh, happens that your uh, butt is hanging above uh, the bath, so to say. You can put a bucket under your uh, butt and then you take a usual uh, rubber um, um, hose. One end of the hose you uh, put onto the uh, crane uh, where the water is coming out and, you, and the other end of the hose, of the rubber hose, uh, you uh, be freed from everything that is necessary that you usually use for enemas so it uh, no adaptions and then you take sandpaper and work with this on this end of the rubber hose and this way uh, so it will be easier and cannot harm your uh, entrance into the intestines into the column then you pick or control the temperature uh, um, at uh, normal so it's not too cold and not too warm and then you let like uh, you put it to your to the entrance to your whole column and then you uh, let like 100 milliliters uh, to flow inside so just a little bit and you relax your uh, intestines you re relax your muscles and after this you let it out directly so there is no time for the water to be absorbed and it is uh, it won't get stretched neither basically it's just the same cologne therapy like in the hospital but in the first place you can always do it by yourself secondly the cologne therapy costs a lot but here you can do it for free so in the first place you let 100 milliliters inside and let it out then you uh, let 200 milliliters inside and it goes out as well and slowly you, in, uh, you cleanse the intestines more and more without uh, damaging it, without stretching it uh, very few people are able to uh, feel their intestines and very few people know the fact that the intestines will um, suck in the water that, they, that it needs and uh, let the water out if it doesn't need it. And when, so it has an own intelligence. And when you do the cleansing this way, you start to feel uh, how you need to move, how you need, uh, what you need to do in order to open the sphincters. So first to clean your colon. You cleanse the beginning of the large intestines and then you open the next <coughs> sphincters and uh, go further and further uh, up to the small intestine. So Olga had an interesting conversation with a doctor once. The working sphere of the uh, doctor was a pro proctologist, so he was doing working with uh, this, uh, the intestine, the cleansing. And she asked him, what is the best uh, cleansing of the intestine? Uh, and she asked them, what is the composition of the stones within the intestines? Are they uh, acidic or are they alkaline? And he answered a very interesting thing. Uh, and he answered that it is uh, different with everyone. For example, if a person need, uh, eats a lot of uh, bread, and logically uh, there is a lot of fun fungi in the body then the stones will be uh, acidic and if the, and if the uh, stone um, is a result from cooked food then it has an alkaline uh, nature, it is an alkaline stone and now many people think that when you do an enema you have to keep this uh, amount of liquid uh, for a certain time in your colon, in your intestines. And then uh, something more will uh, dissolve and go uh, out again. Many people are doing this uh, kind of klisma with uh, soda, baking soda. Uh, but if these stones have uh, an alkaline nature, then this soda, uh, this baking soda, will uh, enforce, enhance uh, these uh, stones again. Olga knows uh, people uh, who uh, were in a hospital for uh, 
doing uh, and doing uh, cologne therapy and they cleans their intestines quite good and she knows examples when uh, people have uh, gained very good results with colavado and at the same time no olga also no uh, has examples and experience with people who gained uh, no results uh, from these methods and Olga is dealing with this question since uh, the 90s, so uh, more than uh, 27 years. And she came to the conclusion after also uh, hearing experience from uh, thousands of people that the best cleansing of the intestines is uh, cleansing with urine. And Olga is not saying that people have definitely to do it. But the results w which happened after the cleansing with urine they are the best and we uh, and Olga is uh, ready to uh, and Olga is willing to share this uh, recipe now and this cleansing is uh, needs uh, about around 20 days to be done and you first you need to understand that it is not recommended uh, it is not good to infuse uh, raw urine into your intestine and if you try out different uh, approaches, then you will, will simply feel uh, why Olga is not recommending this. So uh, the cleansing with urine uh, is consisting out of two parts. Uh, the first part is you make a usual uh, cleansing of the intestines with water. So you go, let it in, let it out and then you wait for 40 minutes. Uh, these 14 minutes are necessary so uh, in order for your intestines not to throw out what you are going uh, to put in there. But if more time will pass by, for example uh, 90 minutes, then in the intestine uh, gases will occur and you simply will not be able to hold uh, urine there. So after you uh, do the first enema with water, and uh, you wait for 40 minutes then uh, you can do whatever you want but please don't eat anything uh, after uh, this 40 minutes you, you uh, make another enema with one liter of boiled uh, urine so simply one once boiled and then cooled down to the temperature of the body and then inserted and here you need to pay a lot of attention at the time how long you can keep this urine uh, enema in yourself. Uh, the main goal are 20 minutes. Uh, here you can see in what shape, uh, in what form your intestines are. If you cannot keep uh, this urine for 20 minutes in your intestines, this means that your intestines are very much polluted. After 20 minutes, minutes uh, you can let it out easily and the next uh, cleansing will be after one day and the day when you are doing no cleansing, when you are relaxing, you should uh, either uh, drink bacteria or make a really small uh, enemas with a solution of bacteria. So the next cleansing uh, on the third day uh, you make the same uh, first step, you cleanse your intestine with a normal enema once and then you wait 40 minutes uh, and then after the 40 minutes, 40 minutes you uh, take your urina but this urina, this enema of urina is 500 milliliters from 1 liter so you boil down your uh, raw urine to half a liter. One liter becomes half a liter and then this half liter cools down and you insert it. You hold it for 20 minutes again and next day is uh, a free day. So every second day is always uh, a day to restore, to relax. And on the third, um, or in our example, on the fifth day when we make the third set cleansing session uh, we use uh, one quarter of boiled down urine uh, of uh, one liter and again every session uh, first we, me we make the um, cleansing with simply with water and uh, wait 40 minutes 
and on the third session we take uh, one quarter of uh, one liter so we boil down one liter of urine to 250 milliliters and make the enema with it and wait again for 20 minutes and show uh, look how our body reacts we boil down uh, from one liter to the quarter to 250 milliliters but uh, from these 250 milliliters we take only 200 milliliters and the fourth session is very important because uh, different people uh, have to uh, have different results here if the person is uh, of a quiet uh, big constitution and this person is not afraid of losing weight this person can do every day so one day after the next after the other each day adding 50 milliliters so uh, on the first uh, session we used uh, 200 milliliters of boiled uh, down urine on the next session we used 250 milliliters uh, again of boiled down and then the next session 300 milliliters next session 350 next 400 next 450 and the last session of 500 milliliters of boiled down urine if the uh, one if the one had a relatively small small uh, uh, volume uh, of the body small constitution and this one is afraid of losing weight then this person should use uh, the should make the cleansing every second day so uh, keep one day uh, free between uh, the, the cleansings uh, doing one or even two days of uh, pauses and during these days uh, he should uh, the person the one should drink a lot of uh, bacteria and uh, should use those kind of products which um, activate kapu uh, which is a Ayurvedian term and uh, these products also uh, promote uh, the creation of slime. Uh, for example, a uh, kissel of oat or of lime, uh, flux. These products create a lot of, uh, um, promote the creation of slime because uh, these cleansings, uh, this, this cleansing suppresses uh, kapha. And the main criteria here is to keep the urina 20 minutes uh, in one in oneself every time. If you cannot keep uh, it for 20 minutes, this means that the intestines are dirty. And if uh, people of a uh, big constitution uh, are adding 50 milliliters, so then uh, small uh, people of a small constitution may add 100 milliliters at once. So we have a session with 200 milliliters, uh, and then we have two days off, two free days, and uh, on the next session we have 300 milliliters. And if you cannot uh, keep this for 20 minutes, you simply repeat the same amount next time again. So if you can keep up 200 milliliters but cannot keep 300 milliliters, this means next time you try to keep 300 again and you stay uh, in this with this amount as long as you uh, are not able to keep it for 20 minutes. And then you reach the 500 milliliters and you make a day a free day, and uh, people of a big constitution may also. Uh, take a free day and then you do uh, three or four sessions with 500 milliliters so this means you always need uh, two liters of raw urine and next you go in descending order so 500 400 300 200 milliliters and when you do the uh, 500 the sessions uh, with 500 milliliters one after the other you also uh, make free days in between. And what are the benefits from this cleansing? In the first place, when we boil down urine, we uh, receive a very high concentrated uh, solution uh, with salt. But the main thing is that think, since this is the memory of water, it has, it has, it holds 
all the information uh, from our body within it. And this way, in the first place, we are working with a, a vibrational effect. Uh, physics knows that if we have two uh, waves w which are similar and one wave interacts with the other, then they um, delete each other. And by doing so, we are deleting uh, the reasons uh, on the uh, vibrational level. As Olga already said, this is a quite uh, high concentrated uh, solution with salt, so it has a certain osmosis. And the most important thing here is that this boiled down urina is uh, dissolving uh, both the stones which are acidic and the stones which are alkaline. Uh, so that's why in this case we have a universal solution. And also very important, uh, this is quite hard to explain for, from a scientific point of view, but this is something that is uh, very clear, um, perceivable. When we boil down urine to the quarter, we gain the structure of this liquid. Uh, we gain a structure, we gain a structure which is hexa, uh, hexa, hexahedron. So, uh, it is a structure that has uh, six corners, um, which is used by the bees in their stocks, for example. And this structure is the most, uh, the most energy efficient uh, form structure. And we gain the energy of Kronos, uh, the energy of time. And this uh, will give you uh, a very clear um, rejuvenation. And Olga will not uh, go over to um, different Uh, theories which are stating the opposite when people are um, speaking about hormones and uh, all that stuff uh, Olga knows all of it very well and Olga can uh, refute uh, all of these um, statements but this takes a lot of time and as she said already a very strong rejuvenation takes place but what's more important, after this, the slime goes away, the stones dissolve uh, and the pathogenic flora uh, gets out and peristalsis of the intestine gets restored. The people who are suffering from candida, they are cleansing it out of their intestines and it is like uh, ropes of uh, candida are coming out. So, uh, in order to come back to the question about the candida in the beginning of the talk, uh, Olga suggests strongly to try this uh, um, cleansing. As for today, there are hundreds of millions of people uh, who cannot solve this problem. But it is enough to make uh, such a cleansing only once in order to solve this. And what's more interesting is that after this cleansing, uh, all the other organs start to clean themselves as well. And Olga has a lot of examples from people when after this cleansing, uh, parasites even from the liver started to exit. Uh, Olga understands, understands that it may cost too, cost too much to make tests or you, don't have, you may not have enough time to do this. In Russia it is much easier. And that's why when people are attending at the webinar, yeah. Olga asks the people to uh, make tests on their constitution before their transition and or before they start the method and after uh, they have started working with it. And, uh, and there is a clear difference in the results. And uh, Olga isn't saying here that uh, in the webinars this cleansing is uh, used. There are other techniques without the urine therapy. But if people are using this recommendation and are doing this cleansing, uh, this will uh, make the transition very much quicker. So the results are incredible. 
What are the usual oppositions for uh, this kind of cleansing? It smells strongly and of course if you eat meat uh, this uh, smells strong. But if you have a normal uh, diet, uh, then uh, the smell isn't disturbing at all. If your uh, urine is smelling, this means uh, smelling bad. This means that your organism, your body is in a bad shape. In a clean organism, nothing is smelling bad. Even if your body isn't clean from the beginning, and maybe maybe the first few times it will uh, smell, but afterwards it will decrease. And logically, when you are doing this cleansing, it is prohibited to eat food, uh, eat meat, eat fish, and drink alcohol. This uh, cleansing is also nothing for people with uh, sugar diabetes. Uh, so, if you have uh, this uh, issue and you like to do uh, this cleansing, Please step in contact with Olga because then uh, we need to um, apply this personally for you. And this cleansing is also dealing with hemorrhoids. But again, you have to do it uh, correctly because this can hurt a lot. This cleansing is also de dealing with the... Um, sores uh, of the intestines, but uh, in this case you need another schedule, another program for executing. This cleansing can also fight the issue uh, of impotence. So if the male has a, a disbalance in this uh, issue, uh, then uh, this uh, can be restored. This also has positive effects on uh, the female uh, genitals, the female reproductive organs, uh, but the uh, women need also to do uh, a few more um, additional uh, moments. And, uh, the women need to uh, clean the vagina as well and the uh, walls of the womb as well. And these are very deep processes and people sometimes think that only drinking juice is enough. Uh, this uh, cleansing can also have a major role in uh, fighting uh, of, the, of cancer issues. Uh, same goes with allergies and everything that is connected with lungs, respiratory uh, work, uh, with the bronchia. Olga cannot name a problem which wouldn't be affected by this uh, cleansing. The only uh, moment where we need to apply to change the program a little bit is uh, with diabetes and with an ill pancreas. Uh, Olga can say, judging from her personal experience, that this cleansing has uh, helped and saved uh, life uh, with many people, for many people. So such an easy uh, action can change your life completely. You, uh, there are some things that we cannot state here openly because this will be available online. But if you have any questions uh, in this uh, concerning this cleansing, uh, you can contact us and uh, we will inform you. And Olga wants to add here that after she cleansed her vagina the first time, there they exited a ball of uh, compressed uh, fungi uh, out of her in the size of a ping pong ball. Uh, when she saw this, she was uh, shocked because she simply couldn't understand how something like this uh, was inside there. And, uh, this is something that uh, happens with the most. And now Olga is 47 years old and her repro reproductive organs are like uh, the ones uh, from a uh, young uh, woman. Uh, they are narrow, they are, uh, they are strong and they are active and sensitive. So in Olga's age, many uh, women suffer from the fact that the uh, uh, vagina is stretched, for example. This is connected with the sexual life of the one, of the woman. 
and some some may even uh, make a surgery in order to narrow uh, the um, yeah, the size again and many have their sensitivity disturbed uh, logically this takes effects on the social life and this all is connected uh, with pollution and when uh, such a big ball of uh, pollution uh, not clear what uh, everything is inside there is exiting you then uh, sensitivity uh, becomes uh, active again and Olga understands that uh, many people are very far away from this experience and people come to Olga and say her I want to be become I want to become breatharian and the person asks Olga how fast can I do this? And Olga watches uh, him, uh, observes him and thinks. Uh, if we take all the amount of pollution uh, what, which we need to take out of your body, we take it out and put it in front of you, uh, this, this one would uh, see this huge amount uh, of dead, of death, before him, including parasites, candida and fungi, chemicals. This uh, question wouldn't appear in his mind. The question of becoming breatharian wouldn't appear in his mind. And another question which Olga encounters very often, when a whole pack of uh, worms exits the body after those kinds of cleanings, and especially uh, women became afraid and starts to cry. And very often people call to Olga and say, Oh my God, there is a worm such a, from, of such a size, ex it has exited my, my body. Olga says to this, uh, to, the one, to this one, Why are you crying? Are you sorry that it has exited you? Uh, she says, no, it's so scary that it was living inside of me. And Olga says, but it has exited already, why are you screaming right now? Why are you crying now? You should be afraid when it was uh, inside of you. And she says, I, I didn't know it at this time. And she says, you should be happy now. Another thing that hope happens all the time is when uh, people uh, with experience, long-term experience of raw food come to Olga and say, I'm raw foodarian for an example for five years, I'm totally clean now. Uh, then, we, then they start doing cleansings and uh, so, so many different things uh, come out, you, you cannot believe it. And uh, this is a principal position here by Olga. It is always better to clean uh, completely in advance before uh, yes, not completing it. And here we have a point that we need to make clear again. Uh, the system uh, of transitioning to breatharianism by Olga is including uh, cleansings in, in it. Uh, and the methods uh, of cleansing which Olga offers, they are not uh, standards. They are basically the transition. So remember this question, if a person needs to cleanse himself three years before he starts to transit, no, these processes, they are interconnected. So it's not like you have only to do cleansings and then the transition will happen. There is more to it. Uh, and this is the point of having a system.